Amen. Thank you, Brother Gary. That's beautiful. Amen. We got a lot of nerve to do that without music, though, doesn't he? Thank you, sir. We appreciate that. I uh, also failed to mention the poinsettia here, I think, in front of me is in uh, memory of our dear brother, Brother Ori Phelps, I think, placed here by his family, and so we're thankful for that. Uh, if you have your Bibles this morning, if you'll turn with me to the book of Romans, Romans chapter 16, and uh, my plan is to conclude the book of Romans today and tonight, and then next Sunday we'll uh, look at a Christmas message, and Sunday morning I think our children have a little program they're going to do, maybe five, ten minutes in the morning next Sunday, and then our uh, next Sunday evening, our adult choir will be presenting the Christmas program, and so uh, it's not that I've forgotten about Christmas messages, but, uh, but we're going to look at the last chapter of the book of Romans today, and uh, Romans chapter 16. It's a beautiful passage here because it lists a lot of names, and as we look at this today, you look at, at verses 1 through 16, you say, well, Pastor, that's just a, a list of names and names that maybe are hard to pronounce. These are people maybe we'd never heard from before and never hear from again. And it really doesn't give a lot of description about these names. But you know what? These people, folks, were very, very, very important to the Apostle Paul. They were ordinary people who made an extraordinary difference. And you know, as we think back in our lives, and we look at this sometimes, and we think of those people in our lives who have been a great impact, uh, made a great influence, been a great example, and made a big difference in our Christian life. You just think for that just for a moment. You go back to your early days, maybe it was a Sunday school teacher you had. Maybe in youth or maybe in the primary department, maybe uh, in older life, whatever it may be. Maybe it was a pastor, maybe it was a deacon, maybe it was a family member, a mother, a father, a grandparent. Someone who made a lasting impact on your life in your Christian walk with the Lord. Maybe it was someone who had great influence, someone who not only taught you the scriptures, maybe led you to the Lord and told you about Jesus, invited you to church, but maybe they, uh, you saw how they lived their lives and they made a great impact and had a great influence and they made a big difference in your Christian life. I can think of several people in my life. You can probably think of a lot of people in your life. But you know, Paul, as he concludes this letter to the believers in Rome, Paul looked at this and, and we see this as just a list of names. But to Paul, they were very, very important people. Because the people we look at today, these were people who perhaps had fed Paul when he was hungry and gave Paul something to drink when he was thirsty. And they housed Paul when he was tired and they let him sleep there and they let him rest there. And it may have been ones that Paul had that encouraged Paul and supported Paul when he needed encouragement, when he needed support, when he needed a shoulder to cry on. Maybe those were the ones who lended him a shoulder to cry on. See, Paul knew he couldn't do this by himself. Paul needed a team. And Paul had been on these missionary journeys. He's probably writing Romans here uh, towards the end of his third missionary journey from a place called Corinth in Greece. And he's writing, these believers that he writes to are now in Rome. And he sends greetings to them. And, and Paul had met several of them, and, and they had met with Paul on his missionary journeys. But now they were in Rome, the capital city, the largest city of the Roman Empire. And Paul is sending greetings here. Because you see, to Paul, these people were not irrelevant. They were not unimportant. They were not insignificant. They were very important people to Paul. They'd made a great difference in Paul's life and Paul's ministry. They'd had a great impact, great influence, been a great example to Paul. And Paul writes today to show his appreciation. Paul writes to recognize them, and Paul writes to thank them. Romans chapter 16, beginning with verse number 1. You bear with me on some of these names today. I commend unto you Phoebe, our sister, which is a servant in the, of the church, which is, which is at Sincrea, that you receive her in the Lord, has become a saint, and that you assist her in whatsoever business she had need of you, for she had been a succor of many and of myself also. Greet Priscilla and Aquila, my helpers in Christ Jesus, who have for my life laid down their own necks, and to whom not only I give thanks, but also all the churches of the Gentiles. Likewise, greet the church that is in their house. Salute my well-beloved Eponidas, who is the firstfruits of Achaia unto Christ. Greet Mary, who bestowed much labor on us. Salute Andronicus and Junia, my kinsmen, my fellow prisoners, who are note among the apostles, who also were in Christ before me. Greet Amplius, my beloved in the Lord. Salute Urbane, our helper in Christ, and Stachus, my beloved. Salute Apellus, approved in Christ. Salute them, which are of Aristobulus' household. Salute Herodion, my kinsmen. Greet them that be of the household of Narcissus, which are in the Lord. 
<clears throat> salute Tryphena and Tryphosa, who labor in the Lord. Salute the beloved Persis, which labored much in the Lord. Salute Rufus, chosen of the Lord, and his mother and mine. Salute Asyncritus, Phlegon, Hermes, Petrobus, Hermes, and the brethren which are with him. Salute Philologus and Julia, Neros and his sister, and Olympus, and all the saints which are with him. Salute one another with a holy kiss. The churches of Christ salute you. You didn't think I could do it, did you? Now, if you have a different pronunciation, you let me know, okay? But the way I look at it, you don't know how to pronounce it. I don't know how to pronounce it, so we're in the same boat. Amen? But you see these people, we look at this today, and you say, you know what? I've probably never heard a sermon on this. Pastor, it's just a list of names. Some of these names hard to pronounce. We've never heard of these people, never hear about them again. We don't know what they did, who they were, where they lived, anything like that. But you see, folks, to Paul, they were important people. You know, that's what it takes with us. We can't do this ministry alone. We have to have a team of people, people working behind the scenes and working here and doing this and doing that. But all these people were faithful brothers and sisters in Christ. And you know, the interesting thing is Paul writes, and he mentions several females here which was very important because females in this day and time were pretty much considered second-class citizens. They didn't have a lot of rights. They didn't speak in public. They, did, they didn't do a lot outside the home. But Paul mentions several females here. But these people had been with Paul on his missionary journeys. Paul had ministered to them. They had ministered to Paul. Maybe Paul had led many to the Lord. But these were those who stuck their necks out for Paul. And they stood up for Paul. And they fed him when he was hungry and gave him something to drink when he was thirsty. And they lent him a place to stay. And they perhaps gave him clothing and encouragement and support. And they prayed with him and prayed for him. And, and maybe gave a shoulder for him to cry on. These are the people who made Paul's ministry very successful. But you know, Paul was in the limelight. But Paul begins here in verses 1 and 2. He says, I commend unto you Phoebe, our sister. The word Phoebe simply means bride or radiant. It says, Phoebe is our sister, which is a servant of the church, which is at Sincrea. Now, you look at this word servant, it's the word diakonos. And some people will argue, say, well, this is arguing for a woman deacon or deacon as well. I don't think it's the office of deacon that we have today because Paul writes later, a deacon's to be the husband of one wife. Phoebe doesn't meet that qualification, so you can't contradict Scripture. But she had a ministry. She had a ministry to the poor and to the elderly and to the sick and to the needy and to the strangers and the widows. She had a ministry here. And no doubt Phoebe was probably the one that Paul entrusted with this letter to the Roman church. As he writes this letter and he gives it to this dear Saint Phoebe, he said, I want you to take this from Corinth and I want you to take it to the believers in Rome. He entrusted this passage, these, these passages of Romans the great doctrines of the Christian faith, the great truths of the Christian faith. But Paul trusted her enough to entrust this letter to her and said, make sure you get it to Rome. Because he says, when you get to Rome and they open, they read this letter. He says to the believers in Rome, I commend to you Phoebe. She's a highly respected woman, a highly regarded woman, a woman who is loved much, uh, has a great uh, reputation here. And he says she's at the church which is at Sincrea. That's a port city of Corinth, about four or five miles from Corinth. But look what he says in verse 2. He says, I commend her to you, I recommend her to you, that you receive her in the Lord as become a saint, and that you assist her in whatever business, whatever ministry. If she needs help caring for the sick, you help her. If she needs help doing this, you help her. Because not only has she been a help to so many, and she deserves this help, but she's been a help to me. Now, we don't read a lot about Phoebe in Scripture, do we? But you know what? Phoebe's name is forever enshrined in the pages of Holy Scripture as a great example of Christian faith. Did you know that? Well, that's wonderful, isn't it? You see what I'm saying here, folks? Everyone is important and significant in the eyes of the Lord. Sometimes we think, well, our work goes unrecognized. Or work in the kitchen, or work driving a van, or work cleaning, or work doing this, or visiting someone who's sick. Well, everyone in the church doesn't know about that. But let me tell you something, God knows about it. And that's all that matters. That's all that counts, because that's who we're going to stand before one day. But you see, these people were faithful servants of the Lord, and faithful servants of Paul, fellow laborers and co-workers who worked with Paul, and gave Paul success in his ministry, because Paul thought, look, I can't do this by myself. I need your help. And he's writing to show his appreciation, to recognize them, to thank them. He says there in verse number 3, he says, Greet Priscilla and Aquila. Priscilla and Aquila were husband and wife. And says, uh, My helpers in Christ Jesus, 
who have for my life laid down their own necks, risked their lives for me, maybe a ride in Ephesus, and to whom not only I give thanks, but also all the churches of the Gentiles likewise greet the church that is in their house. Now, I'm not going through every single individual here because a lot of these individuals are not mentioned elsewhere in Scripture. But Aquila and Priscilla were husband and wife team. They had been expelled from Rome, Acts chapter 18, by a, a decree of Emperor Claudius. All the Jews were expelled from Rome. And so Aquila and Priscilla, they left, they went to Corinth. Paul, on one of his missionary journeys, he went to Corinth, met up with Aquila and Priscilla, and he uh, said the same occupation. They were tent makers, they were leather workers. So he struck up a great relationship with them. And he even took them to Ephesus. He left them in Ephesus. And remember, there in Acts chapter 18, Apollos, this great orator, He's preaching, and, and uh, Aquila and Priscilla pull him off to the side and explain unto him the way of the Christian faith more accurately or completely. He became a great preacher. But, but many times we see here that, that Paul mentions Aquila and Priscilla. They were with Paul many times, leaving Ephesus. Now they are back in Rome, their hometown right here. And Paul is sending greetings. But what Paul is saying, Aquila and Priscilla, thank you for being there for me. Thank you for housing a church in your home. Thank you for letting me stay with you and feeding me and giving me something to drink. Thank you for supporting me and encouraging me. Thank you for being there when I was down or when I was up. Thank you for being there. And he's sending greetings. He said, I want you to greet Aquila and Priscilla there in Rome because they've been a great help to me. You see, they'd had an impact and an influence on others for Jesus Christ. A church met in their home. They had an open heart, and they had an open home. And then we go on in verse 5. He says, salute my well-beloved Eponidas. Eponidas was a Greek name. It was a Gentile name. But, but I want you to see here as Paul writes this. You see, Paul sends greetings to Romans and Greeks, to Jews and Gentiles, to men and women, to prisoners and prominent citizens, to slaves and to masters. Because, folks, the Christian gospel goes across all racial and social and economic and ethnic lives. It knows no black and white. It knows no male and female. It knows no slave or master. It knows no rich or poor. The gospel is for every single person. Amen? It's for everyone. And so Paul's writing here, this Eponidas here, he says... Uh, Salute the well-beloved Ebony, who's the first, one of the first converts in the province of Asia, took courage in a pagan society to accept Jesus Christ as Savior. Maybe Paul had led him to the Lord. Maybe Paul had discipled him. Maybe he had ministered to Paul. Maybe Paul had ministered to him. But he's sending greetings here to Eponidas. Then he says in verse 6, Greek Mary. Mary was a Jewish female name. Greek Mary who bestowed much labor on us. Now the word much labor, the word labor seen means to the point of exhaustion. This lady somehow helped Paul. And you know what? Paul didn't forget about her. Paul's writing this. He says, greet Mary. I want you to greet her for me. I want you to tell her I'm thankful for her. And I want you to tell her I'm praying for her. Because I know in turn she's praying for me. And she's there with me as I finish my race. As I run this race. And as I finish my course. Salute Andronicus and Junia. Junia is a feminine name. Maybe this was husband and wife. But look what he says about them. He says they were my kinsmen. Now, when you see that, it could have been talking about blood relatives of Paul, but more than likely talking about fellow Jews. Fellow Jews of Paul, probably from the same tribe of Benjamin as Paul was from. But he said, salute Adronicus and Junia, my kinsmen. Not only that, my fellow prisoners. Evidently, they'd been in prison with Paul at one time, who are of note among the apostles. The apostles know about them. They're well received by the apostles, well recognized by apostles, well reputation of the apostles, who also were in Christ before me. They were saved before I was saved. And boy, I'm thankful for them. That maybe they took Paul to the side and they said, Paul, we're going to pray for you. And Paul, you, you, you need a new coat to go out on your journeys. And Paul, you need a new pair of sandals to go out on your journey. We're going to help you here, Paul. And we're going to give you a place to sleep tonight because you've got to preach the gospel. You see, sometimes the preachers are in the spotlight. The preachers are one in the pulpits proclaiming the gospel. But the only way a preacher is here many times is because of you folks. Did you know that? that you've prayed for your pastor during the week, that you've helped your pastor this way, you've helped your pastor that way. And some of you even feed your pastor sometimes. And boy, I am grateful for that. Amen? I'm going to write you a letter and put all your names on there, okay? And what I'm going to do, I'm going to write on there and say, I'm going to thank so-and-so for the pumpkin pie. 
and I'm going to thank so-and-so for the chicken salad, and I'm going to thank so-and-so for the shrimp. Did you get that? I'm just making sure you're awake this morning, okay? But, but, he, but he's writing here. It's so important to him. And he says, greet Amplius, my beloved the Lord, Urbane, Stachus, Apellus. Those are slave names. Those are common slave names that somehow, maybe Paul had led them to the Lord, but somehow Paul knew them. And they had come in contact with one another on Paul's journeys, but now they were probably slaves in Caesar's household. But you know what? It didn't matter to Paul if you were a king, if you were a queen, or if you were the lowest ladder, you were a slave. If you were in Jesus Christ, you meant something to Paul. Did you know that? And not only that, but you meant something to God. You meant something to Christ. It didn't matter who you are, where you came from, how much money you had, or how much money you didn't have. You were important in the eyes of God. Urbane simply means city dweller. That's where we get our word urban. Stockus, Apellus, approved in Christ, evidently done something, and he'd come through trustworthy and loyal in Christ. He says, salute them which are Aristobulus' household. Some believe this is the grandson of Herod the Great. But he says his household, the servants there, I want you to greet those servants. They don't even have names that are given right there. But listen, in the eyes of God, they're important. Because you know what? God knows every name that's his. Amen? You know, the sheep know his voice. They hear and they follow him. And then he goes here and he says, Salute Herodian, my kinsman. That was a Jewish name. Greet them that be of the household of Narcissus, which are in the Lord. And this was probably slaves also. He says, salute Tryphena and Tryphosa. If you ever have any twins, you can name them this because these are twin sisters. They come from the same root word, fem feminine names. Tryphena and Tryphosa who labor in the Lord. Salute the beloved Persis. This means a woman from Persia which labored much in the Lord. Once again, to the point of exhaustion. But you see here, Paul's talking about prominent men and prominent women. He's talking about slave men and slave women. He's talking about everyone that has helped him along his journeys. I couldn't have done it without you. He says in verse 13, salute Rufus. Chosen in the Lord and his mother and mine. Seems men, simply means he was set apart unto Christ. But I want you to notice there. Some believe this is the same Rufus that's mentioned in Mark's gospel chapter 15 and verse 21 because Mark probably writes from Rome. Rufus would have been well known. But you remember that passage there in Mark chapter 15? There was a man by the name of Rufus and Alexander. And they were sons of a man by the name of Simon of Cyrene. You remember Simon of Cyrene? Jesus, they said, could you carry his cross? Simon of Cyrene picked up the cross and carried it for Jesus for a little way. And can you imagine the impact this had on Rufus? On this son that's probably the same Rufus here. Because he, he's in Rome. And Mark writes from Rome. But he says, salute Rufus, chosen in the Lord. He, he's a great friend of mine, a great co-worker but he says and salute also his mother and mine now this probably isn't Paul's biological mother Paul had a sister he had a nephew we see this in the book of Acts but the thing about it Paul is saying the mother of Rufus was like a mother to me I was out on my journey and I was lonely and I was sad sometimes and I was down sometimes and I didn't have a place to sleep and Rufus mother said come on in Paul you can lay down in this bed and sleep I've got a hot meal for you and you can sit here and rest and relax and study. And you can find protection and security here. Paul says, I thank you that you allowed me to do that. Because she's been like a mother to me. Salute and Syncretus, Phlegon, Hermas, Petrobus, Hermes, and the brethren which are with him. Maybe house churches. Salute Philolicus. This means lover of the word. And Julia, another feminine name. Neros and his sister and Olympus and all the saints which are with him. And then he ends says, salute one another with a holy kiss. Now, this is the way they greet it in this day and time. Guys, I'm not going to give you a holy kiss. I'll give you a holy handshake, amen, or maybe a hug. But that's the way they greeted one another. And then he says, the churches of Christ salute you. Now, we look at this passage rather quickly today because I'm going to end this service a little different today. I'm not going to sing for you, so don't worry about that. But as we look at this passage today, I, I ask you at the beginning, think of people in your life who made a big difference in your Christian life. Think of people who made a big difference. Think of people who had a great impact and a great influence in your Christian life. Maybe you can look back and you say, boy, it was my granddad. He preached the gospel and I heard the gospel. And praise God, I thank him for it. Maybe it was a Sunday school teacher brought you to the side and said, hey, I see some potential in you. 
you seem interested, and I'm going to pray for you, and I'm going to teach you the great truths of Scripture. Maybe it was a mother or father that brought you by and said, I'm going to take you to church. It may not be convenient, but I'm going to take you to church. And I'm going to tell you about Jesus, and I'm going to read Bible stories to you. And and I'm going to see that you're saved, and that you get in church, and you serve the Lord. Maybe it was a deacon who saw potential in you and said, hey, you need to start coming to this class. You need to know about Christ. I don't know who it may be in your life. But think of the people that made an influence and impact in your life. Those people who made a difference. And we think, well, sometimes the world looks at them as ordinary people. But they were ordinary people who made an extraordinary difference in our lives. They made a great difference, a big difference. And you know, we in turn today, folks, the baton has been passed to some of us. And some of us today say, hey, now it's time for us to pull that person aside and tell them about Christ and to be an impact and an influence in their lives and to be a great example and and, and to be someone who makes a difference in that life. Now maybe it's our turn. You see, to to Paul, these people were not just a list of names. To Paul, these people were very important. And Paul writes today to show his appreciation. He writes to recognize them and he writes to thank them. I want you to listen to the words of this song. It's a song most of you know. I want you to listen to the words of this song and just reflect on those who've helped you. to teach my son to school when I was only eight. And every week he would say a prayer before the class would start. And one day when you said that prayer, I asked Jesus in my heart. stood before you and said, remember the time you heard that I was very sick they said that I might die you didn't have much money but you gave me anyway Jesus took the prayers you gave and that's why I'm here today Somehow touched by your generosity Little things that you have done Sacrifices made Unnoticed on the earth In heaven now proclaimed And I know of 
in heaven You're not supposed to cry But I am almost sure There were tears in your eyes As Jesus took your hand And you stood before the Lord He said, my child, look around you For great is your Let's bow our heads. Father, we are thankful today for those who have gone on before us. For those who have been great examples, great influence in our lives. And we're where we are today because of them. And Lord, help us in turn, as the batons pass to many of us, help us in turn, Father, to be that light, that example, that influence to others. Because as we read today, we see where Paul ends this great epistle. Names forever etched into Holy Scripture. Names maybe we didn't know, maybe we can't pronounce. But it's names that were important to Paul. People who had prayed for him and prayed with him. People, when he was down, they, they picked him up. When he needed encouragement, they were there to help him. And Father, we're thankful for those people and help us in turn to be thankful, not only for those, but help us to do that in return, that we see someone who needs a word of encouragement, that we give them that word. We see someone who needs a prayer, we pray for them. We see someone who needs to know about the Lord, we tell them about Jesus. And Lord, at this Christmas season, we know it's a time to give and help us to do that. Father, I pray today as we come to this time of invitation, if there's one here without Christ today, Father, I pray they'll give their heart and life to you today. That they'll realize their need of a Savior, that they'll believe that Jesus Christ died for their sins, was buried and rose again. That's the greatest gift that anyone can receive during this season, the gift of eternal life. Father, I pray today if there's other needs today that people need to come forward and respond, I just pray you'll move in our midst today, Father, and just help us, Lord, each day to take our Christian walk seriously because we never know how it's going to affect someone else. Help us, Lord, to walk with you each and every day of our lives. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Will you stand with me this morning? What number, Gary? Number 118, you sing this morning. Maybe God speaks to your heart somehow, some way today. Maybe you need to respond publicly. You come today and may God bless you.